Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 240. This meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. What are we doing today? We're, we're gonna be looking at a lot of issues. That's what we're gonna be doing today. We're doing triage, like we always do. Uh, and then we're going to do a Wix v4 issue review, which we've been threatening to do for a while. And it's it's time. So we're gonna go through all of the open for all the open v4 issues and at least uh mention each of them. I expect I want to skip over a bunch of them, just setting the stage here a little bit. I don't want to dig into each of them at this point in time. If whoever is it's assigned to says yes, that's on my radar, I am working on it. Um it is I, I know I am going to do that, then we will skip over it. And uh we will come back later at a time later where we'll actually dig into, are we really gonna be doing this issue? But there's still time, so if there's an issue open, you're like, yep, that's still working on that. That's how we're gonna go through the V4 issue review, so I, it does not take us all day. Hey, we have someone asking for help in that. How to copy a file directory, direct, dynamically install it. That is a fantastic question to go send to the Wix users mailing list, or the GitHub discussions, or maybe even Stack Overflow if you can word it with all your details. We're not gonna be able to answer the questions here. But we are going to go do triage if, Bob, you are ready. I am ready. Sweet. All right. I think I transitioned to that without hitting the, anyway, whatever. We'll come back to the slide so you can see the beautiful slide that says triage. Uh, anyway, uh, starting at the top, allow MSI product version to be any valid Wix version. Do we talk about this already? I'm confused. No, we didn't. Sign to me. You put it into triage two weeks ago. And then I did all this stuff in between. What was I thinking? Oh. Um, oh, I know what happened. I assigned this to me, and then I took it out of triage thinking, yes. And then I went, uh, actually, maybe we should we do this? And then I went, oh, and then it wasn't. And I forgot that I took it out of triage, so we didn't talk about it. So we should talk about this, because um, I think it's cool. but. You guys end up in different spots on this, so I'm I don't know where we are at basically the state of the world of this particular thing. Sean, you open it. You wanna describe what you're thinking here? Um I'm thinking that the compiler is letting it through. And in general, the Windows installer will ignore all the fourth field. So it should be pretty easy to let that stuff through. I guess the harder part is figuring out what to do if like the first few fields are bigger than they should be, or if they're missing or something like that. Are you saying that you could pass in 1.2.3.4-abc plus 987654321 and that and then it, compiles? You, absolutely. That'll com well, it won't it'll compile, it doesn't find. You'll get an error saying that's Sorry. not about MSI. Does it build? No. It, You'll get an error. No, it doesn't bind build. Time. Um, who specifically complains at bind time? The bind database command. It because it's validating. Yeah, because it looks at the MSI okay. version because it could have been a bind variable and that, or a. Oh right, and, right, right. And it's complicated because it could have also been a uh, a. What do we call them? Uh, a bind variable that's based off a file version or, or whatever, right? right? And oh, yep. it gets complicated. So, so that's where the final check is. And the point here is that, you know, if we let, we could let four versions plus all the labels through and put it in the MSI. So if you had an, uh, uh, a file, I don't know how you would get there. Anyway, you could do it. <laughs> the question is, should we allow all the extra parts? Um, only via an opt-in mechanism. Some kind of opt-in mechanism. So Otherwise, we should not allow bad data. Re relying on the fact that MSI ignores the fourth field is, uh, you know, not, that doesn't mean it's still bad. <laughs> I think this is kind of the crux of the issue, right? So I, I don't want to build another mechanism 
like another command line switch or something else that you have to set to say allow uh technically legal but not exactly what the spec says to windows installer you know versions i don't know how to word that um if we're allowed i'll be like yeah you can you can put those kind of versions MSI. it's all good and then let it go through and bob's I like mean, nah i mean it's it's documented to ignore the fourth field so i don't Yes. Well, it, it is, but any other version in MSI um, is clearly documented as as being numeric. So the idea that we can add dashes and pluses is it, it's it's counter to it's counter to everything else in MSI. It's very unlikely that we'd say, hey, did you know we're going to put dashes and a plus after the fourth version number that they'd say, oh, yeah, we expected that. Right. <laughs> not, not back in 97. <laughs> 94. Never sorry. was but a dream. When it was designed in 94, um, implemented in 97. Anyway. Um, because back then, four version fields ought to be enough for anybody. Yeah, and then they went off and did something weird with the first two parts of it and messed all that up. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I still don't understand that, but whatever. They, they, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I, I still think this is cool. The idea of it is cool, but that's about as far as I can go with it. I'm, I'm, I'm not fine with it, but. You know, meh, whatever. It, 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 if someone wants to do that, that's cool. But um, it, sh it can't happen accidentally. And that's a problem with, uh, uh, as you point out, the, the uh, bound bind time variables. Yeah. Bound to other things. It's the delayed um, resolve variables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, those those are special enough. They deserve a name. We should come up with a name for those because they're there is they're one. really I'm cool. Remembering it anyway. Yes. Uh, yes. But because of that, it's it's way too easy for this kind of version to get in. Um, that's true. That's true. You could slip something around. Although I think it's, I don't think we pull in the file version. That's it, a string. Sorry, no. We it, only get the it one that's come the in number. But you could do it through a bind variable and yada yada yada. Anyway. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Does conversion info resource have them? The the string version can, the right, numeric right, right. one can't, and I don't know the yeah. specific names of those two differences. And right. I'm pretty confident that we read the numeric one, not the string one. But I'd have to go mm -hmm. double check to be sure about that. Yeah. No, I know they can. I know they can appear in you know like Explorer properties. So. Um, anyway, uh, because of that, because it's too easy to get a value like this, I think it should not be supported without some kind of explicit gesture, command line switch, or mm. an attribute. Yeah, it okay. could be. It can be in the language. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I, I hear you. I don't want to add another switch. This is kind of like, it's, it's, it's cute, but it's not worth it to do a lot of work for it, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, I would not go that far even, but yeah, I'm in that kind of a boat. I mean, for me, this goes back to, I don't think the compiler should be allowing stuff that the backend doesn't ever use, but I've lost that argument, so... Well, this is just the MSI backend that has this restriction. Well, so it's the one that has to validate it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the same argument we got in the last time. Like the package is MSI. If you want to build something else, you should have a different element for your output. Uh, yeah, and put your version on that new element that's your own. Uh, yeah, that's definitely where we we differ in the design there. Yeah, but also in. There's too much uh, because of bind time variables, and I think a general direction, the the whole build pipeline should go in. We're going to have 
lots more stuff that gets through the compiler proper and can only be validated later at some point, whether it's the back end. It's, and the back end is a natural place, right? Because the back end is where we put the output specific um, knowledge. So output specific validation, it's a natural place. Yeah, and and I, I, I've basically come to that same conclusion given the bugs that have slipped through in different ways through bind variables. Essentially, whenever bind variables used in the way we're like, oh, that can slip through. I, I agree. But at the same time, uh, I attempted some, I'm trying to remember what I did recently. Uh, it, the bind time validation is, that's a, it's an undertaking, I guess I would say. Um, the, the bind time uh, components are not organized in a way to do that sort of validation. So we're going to, when we do such work, uh, we need to think about it more holistically than what I was yeah. trying to do. We're just trying to like, oh, this should be straightforward. I will just add this test. It's it's much more intricate, I'm finding, than, than and I was surprised. I was like, ah, so uh, when we tackle the problem that you just raised, Bob, of doing more validation, the back end, particularly to catch uh, like bind variables, things like that, we need to do so holistically. That, that's my yeah. own point. No, no, I, don't completely, know. I don't know why I brought I that up now. Agree. It's, it just burned me recently enough that I remember the pain, not exactly what caused the pain, um, and solve that. So, yeah, and and to be clear, I don't want the compiler to be, you know, completely dumb. Um, well, maybe, but <laughs> I, I, I probably don't because we still create libraries straight out of the compiler. Correct. So until unless that changes, yeah, I I you know I don't want the compiler to be completely dumb. It should it should do sanity checking at least. And again, thinking holistically. Maybe this is where we, you know, uh, come up with a way to share that kind of validation where the output is known or can be specified. Sure. All right. So this is cute, but not useful enough to get it over the line for V4. I'd like to revisit it in V5. Oh, Again, all right. when, when, when we're talking about this. Okay. Yeah, Fair more enough. holistically. All right. So then milestone V next, I think. And uh, we will revisit it then. All right. Okay. Uh, for me. Unable to create new Wix, pro new Wix project in Visual. I assume that's Visual Studio. One hopes. Guessing. Uh, this is actually basically resolved. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, this. Yeah, so he had a very, very clean... Um, Visual Studio, and we are probably missing some set of components that are necessary. I know Votive declares it needs the work, the work editor, the ed something work the core, work core editor, yeah, core editor, ah, that core editor. But apparently, it needs more. What more that is, we'd have to go kind of work our way up. So, I um, think actually, that's um. That makes sense based on him installing Python, which probably brought in all the stuff, and then suddenly Wix started working. You're like, ah, Python brought in whatever the things were that Wix uh, that Votive needed to make it work. Yeah, I'm a little curious because the error message he's showing is Wix test action one, and he says he picked setup project, but I'm wondering if it was a custom, custom action. action project which would definitely require oh, that would definitely require the language. More. That's actually an interesting point too. We should probably capture that in this issue that if you just install Votive and try to create a, you'll get a custom action template for C++ right. and, uh, okay. This needs, somebody needs to go and sit and think about this for a while. Cause it's like, sorry, I didn't finish that thought. It got so bad. Uh, if, Votive comes with templates for C++ and C Sharp, and I think even VB actions, which means technically it should say, hey, if you want to use this template, you're going to need C Sharp, VB, and C++, which is then going to cause tons of stuff to get installed on your machine if it said, if it actually said you need to be able to have all those. And you might be like, I never built C++ custom actions. Why do I need all this C++ stuff installed? Anyway, that's why I say this needs to be thought out how many dependencies get added on top of. That. I thought Visual Studio tried to be helpful there, where if you tried to open a project that required components, it would tell you that. I thought the components had to tell you what they needed, though. 
but well, maybe in like those for CS Clutch? Yeah, CS does, Clutch in those. Uh, the V6 does for, for Votive itself, but I'm wondering if the templates aren't quite what that system is looking for. I don't, I, the, as I recall, the like the C sharp template is pretty basic. You know, like recognizably a C sharp, pro, an old school C sharp project. I'm just wondering if that's, you know, if there's something missing or something extra that's confusing the you know, the Visual Studio magic there. It, it could be I could have brought up a red herring just based on the name action. Yeah, yeah. Because he says he's, it's creating creating a normal MSI project. So. Well, of course, they drop an image and not the text. Oh, yeah, whenever. Um, job control five. Yeah, this doesn't doesn't provide enough information to know. Anyway, there's an investigation for someone to go dig in and make Votive automatically install the appropriate thing, all of the things it needs, as opposed to the things that it chooses to right now. Uh, um, that can go in Votive and. I don't know what milestone we put Votive in, but it doesn't have to be in V4. Has its own. Good. Excellent. Wix toolset 2019 extension doesn't install and throws error. I actually closed this. Oh. VS Hive stub. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah. This looks weird. I agree. I saw that. I was like, oh, I don't test this. Yep. I mean, as usual, we have no control over V6 installation. Yeah, but... yeah. See, that that's, yeah. That's one of those. It's like, you know, honestly, take this error message to Visual Studio and have them take a look at it because um, it's their installer and we can't do anything with it, unfortunately. All right. So I snuck this one in this morning as I think I was trying to get done with everything else. Um, this is a new whip for V4. This has been a thing I've been poking at for quite a long time, trying to figure out what to do with heat uh in general in v4 and uh i haven't written the whip i just tried to get the issue in here real quick the, um but i will go write the document that lays out the um where i think this is gonna go but uh anyway the big thing is heat is i've disliked heat for a very long time uh it was a it's an interesting attempt. It has a lot, of, you know, experimented with a lot of different ideas. And I think a lot of those ideas have not aged well um, in the end. And it hasn't had a lot of care and attention over time. So it's aged very poorly. Uh, so the the net net of that is that I don't want to bring heat um, deeper into the Wix tool set, like by making it a Wix command, like basically all the other Xs have turned into, um, and instead keep it isolated in its own thing so that we can then um, obsolete it and move forward with a more uh, the a new design for the way that we want to tackle harvesting. So I think we need really need to rethink the whole problem because it's it's just simply too big uh, an issue. It keeps coming up, and heat is a problem in that space. So the and the that's why I call it the organized obsolescence of it in V four. It'll still be there. People will be able to migrate from V three and. Uh, that'll be about it that's kind of that's really all i want to say for heat and i'm trying to now write down the details of where we put it so that's what this whip is all about needed to open it for a while because heat.exe has been hanging around out there as this weird thing um without a clear vision of how it moves forward so that's what i'm doing with this one and i've already signed up myself just tackle soon so the whip will outline places it could go. Yeah, the I I've had a couple and I I've removed a couple ideas and my current thinking, just preview for what will be written in text, is uh one, I definitely want to move the Wix harvesting targets out of Wix.targets. So at the beginning of V4, I already isolated them, wanted to shrink the Wix.targets when I was converting it to common targets a long time ago. Um, and now, but there's still a, like a direct import inside Wix targets. So one is to move that, that out and to do so then to make it a, a NuGet package so that you can just reference the heat NuGet package and it will hook all those targets back up for you. So the, that's the, you won't have heat built in, 
but you will be able to add a NuGet package and have all your MS build stuff hopefully just work like it used to before. Okay, um, so it'll be it'll be just like any other like extension NuGet package. Right, except it's not an extension. It's a, right, right. Yeah, it's a it's just the heat things. It's not an extension. It adds the targets and things that you need for all the MS build things to work. Um, and also that could be the way that we give people heat.exe. I don't know. I've getting heat.exe out to people is the part that I have not completely soft solidified. And that's where I'm going to put it in the whip and be like, uh, okay, here it is. What do we want to do with this uh, standalone executable? So, but you're, you're talking about the MS build targets. Like th those would quote unquote, just work. You add a NuGet package and those will just work, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I think anything less than that is overly hard. And we already yeah, shot NuGet yeah, packages yeah. like this, so that, that seems very straightforward. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I mean, just, you know, I'll look at the whip when it comes out, but I'm, I'm fine with an approach that gets the MS build targets, you know, back to the way they work in V3. Because... As we saw when Visual Studio went 64-bit, um, that works. Um, calling the targets directly from your own targets is what didn't work because of the change to 64-bit. So, you know, the <laughs> the making the way that you should do things smooth is, you know, a nice target i think um if if the actual heat targets are still available um i kind of like i would i would shrug i don't you know we provided the, the the items to do it smoothly so i'm hoping that's like the 80 percent scenario for people using heat so um, i think i know what you're saying but also i I think even this plan will still let people directly reference the targets. I don't think it will break them. Okay. So they'll, they'll still be able to yeah, do that sorry, behavior I, that you don't want. I think that will also just work if they do the package well, reference to the, the new get thing. So, well, sorry to be clear. I was mostly referring to heat.exe. Um, uh, people who run heat.exe and like a before build target. I'm like, you can do that, but you're tying yourself to a particular implementation. So if you do that, you're going to have to change somehow, hopefully minor, in V4. You tie right. yourself to an implementation. That's right. your that's your fault. Right. It it is you, it's the the you know the the right the uh, the natural way. Then things just keep working. Yeah, like the that's gonna hurt. Okay, so Zach, actually, this is great. So. I, I assume I was looking away. It's not great that's... that it's going to hurt, just to be clear. No, sorry. <laughs> no. Yes, that is not what I meant. Um, what's the case that you have there? Or maybe we should maybe we should take it offline. So like this is basically this is gonna be a lot of discussion around this whip and getting this into the right place. Because if I could, I would just nuke heat like out of V4 and we just go on. But it's clear that we can't, which is actually why we need to bring it more in but we didn't make we didn't do that in v4 so i'm just trying to juggle all of that around calm calm harvesting yeah well the heat file thing should still work um that's in there yeah we're not, but, lo not losing any functionality yeah, yeah and you'll still be able to get heat.exe exactly how i had this the the final part i where i'm gonna put it in but anyway you so I have been referencing that you want to pull it out of V5. I want to replace it, the scenario completely in V5, yes. So my hope is that there is a V4 release where we put it and we're like, okay, here's the end of V here it is the end of V4. Here's how it will work in V5. Like that's it's kind of the direction I want to go. But I have to solve the problem. Deprecated versus obsoleted. Right. This is the organized obsolescence, and then the end, at some point it is deprecated. And but I can't say what that is. We like there's I just have to sit down for a while and think about. And here's where we're going. But my gut does not tell me that we're going to go where we're at now. So like, that's, like, that's code, code generation is always replaced at some point. It it code generation is you know a, a relatively straightforward cheap way of of 
getting to some you know, desired point of automation, but it never lasts. It's always replaced. Well, we'll see. I'm, no, well, no, I'm sorry. Like, I'm talking generally. It kind of sounded like you were talking about taking it out and not replacing it. No, the the harvesting scenario we that's what I said. The the core piece here is to have we need to, I we need to internalize the harvesting scenario when we started with the let me say V two in Wix V two there was no scenario everything was very very explicit and we've been going slowly working our way to where things can be more calculated for you the Wix tool set can make more decisions for you and the harvesting has been a place that was thrown into v3 and it was always well this should be a one-time code generation tool you should run it and then just be done with it and nobody wants not nobody almost no almost everybody uses it as a run it in a build every single time and that it's just we've not internalize that it's not the tools and none of the processes are working well in that well they can work well in certain scenarios things like that we've been kind of grafting it on and i want us to really absorb the scenario because it's clear it's not going away and what i we have right now is um more painful than it should be and it goes through a tool that is uh needs to be re-implemented from top to bottom so it's essentially all kinds of bad space that we need to target it um hopefully in v5 until then we can't get rid of heat because it's clearly really important to people that's just the way it goes and to be clear what i said about cogen is is the, the fact that heat is external to the build right it's always been something that happens before you start compiling something else um and so it generates code but I've done some fascinating stuff that I can't talk about um, in the V4 build pipeline. The new extensibility model in V4 allows you to do a whole lot of stuff, including generating symbols on the fly. Um, and I really, I don't personally care about heat, but doing it in the pipeline is I just definitely the way to go. Well, we, there are downsides. But anyway, it needs a lot of design. It needs a lot of work. It's not going to fit into V4. And we need to have a plan for how it goes forward. If, and because of V4's change to Wix.exe, um, because of the change to Wix.exe, heat.exe has always been this, like, well, how do you get this exe? And so that's what this is a lot. That's kind of been the crux of the problem that I've been thinking about. And I want to distill into this and how we're moving forward with heat. We use harvesting as part of our standard build. Yep. That's 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 what a lot of people do. Yep. And it's driven because it's easy to forget to run these things. I the the scenarios make sense. They've the the problem is that we've not prioritized the scenario the the implementations that are provided to make those scenarios solid. Right. There's all these kinds of kooky things that we have that you as the consumer have to deal with. And we need to solve better. I argue we need to solve better inside Wix proper. And heat is not the way through that. It's design and its implementation is not the way to the other side. That's not to say the scenarios that are trying to be solved are wrong. It actually it's going the other way around. It's more that we need to adopt those scenarios more deeply in the tool set. And heat has always been this thing that got created on the side as a experimental project by Derek to just say, Hey, look what I can do. And look at all these layers and pieces and all these things that I can glom on together to make it work. And, Oh, look, this is a great use of the code model that Reed implemented. That's based off the C sharp code model. And when you look at all those things, they're all gone. <laughs> they're all they're all deprecated spaces inside Wix today. We need to bring it in and make it more real in V5. Yeah, when did the code model come and basically go away? Three, but three is tricky because three is so long. No, no, I mean in terms of .NET time. Oh, oh, .NET time? I don't I know. I mean, it's still, it's still there. Yeah. It, it's still their framework, but .NET yeah. Core doesn't have it. Yeah, so, and code model anyway. isn't in Wix 4, for example. 
except it's privatized inside well, heat so that heat can keep working. Right, right, right. <laughs> kind of is. Kind of. But anyway, it's, it's just layer on layer on layer of structure that is not the direction to go. So the scenarios that Zach brings up are things that we need to tackle. We need to tackle them better. And heat is not the long-term solution. But we don't have a long-term solution in V4, so we have to keep it keep it going as we move forward into the brave new world of things that do work really well in Wix, predominantly around our new acquisition in CI systems, which is super duper fantastic. We need to make sure that that you can at least do something for heat in that space. That's I predominantly. I.e. NuGet packages. I.e. you can get NuGet package, because that is Microsoft's solution that we have adopted for this particular problem. <sighs> so. Anyway, this has been sitting on my back plate for a long time, just going, how, what am I doing here? Yeah, the fact that we don't have an installer anymore, or we don't have to have an installer anymore, kind of, there, there's a bunch of little tools that don't have a home anymore because they don't fit into the NuGet model. Right, and, and, and all right, so Bob's going to make me write this entire whip right here in front of all of you. But his point that we don't have a setup right now for Wix is actually one of the key things I've been struggling with going, well, maybe we need to bring one back so we can put heat back in there so you can have a way of getting heat. And I was like, well, really? Just for heat? I mean, maybe. And and maybe we will. And maybe we're well, going to put Wix.exe inside Don't forget inside theme, inside. Viewer. It, well, yeah, we're theme Viewer. Well, we <laughs> definitely have Theme Viewer, but Theme Viewer, but you see, and here we get to an interesting difference. Theme Viewer is a tool that a developer uses at a design time they do their work, yeah. they get a result, and then they check that in. It's not a runtime tool. That works great. You install it, you use it on your dev box, you don't put it on your build machine. There's no point in putting heat or theme viewer on your build machine. Heat, on the other hand, is supposed to be that way. Developer runs it, you use it, you get a result, you check it in. But people are using it as a build tool. So now you have to install it on the build machine. And that breaks down <laughs> where I was at with the installers that we currently have slated inside v4 so it's just one more example of the pieces that i was trying to figure out how do i want to put all these together so uh yeah it's <laughs> it exposes all these delayed decisions in v4 that are now coming home to roost because they have to be solved um and as I get a moment to think about them and this actually kicked off based off of a wix users thread where somebody was asking correctly and I think it's actually the same guy that found some issues. Anyway, basically asked, hey, where is heat? And it wasn't in preview zero. And I sat there going, well, we have to solve this for preview one. And so I just started writing this down in between me going, when am I going to do the cap spanning? And when am I going to do the patchwork, which are the other two very large things that have to get tackled. And I was basically not wanting to start either of those because I had this presentation that I did yesterday and I had a deadline before that. And so I was doing small things, not big things. Anyway, there you go. Way too much background on the why things are going. And Zach, I'm glad to hear that you're kind of, you are either already in the same space or have come to the same space that basically says, yeah, we need to solve a lot of this problem properly. So uh, this will be fun. I've put this into before preview one, it will be solved before v4 preview one goes anywhere so yeah good stuff bob has removed trash cool 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 so from here if i think that's all the issues right yep. yes uh, it's nice and clean it's kind of nice to see it clean um these days uh i think that means let's switch over to um all of the v4 issues so i'm going to refresh this in case any new ones got popped up yep i figured uh got added to the list so here we are with 50 issues open in v4 and it's we're what are we eh, about 45 minutes in all right that's fine let's uh go ahead and just like i said i just kind of want to go over the top of them if you're already working out that's fine and i think the first one is jacob jacob's here i have to kind of fill a little space and whatnot, I think. And I know Jacob did work on this, the ability to access persisted variables. And I know there's lots of discussion about how to implement it. And the original idea that I had in my head of 
accessing the RSM file from one burn to another, which sounded terrible and not a good idea at all, and why I was really worried about this feature, was shifted to trying to put things in the registry key, I think. But Jacob, I'm kind of filling space. I'm mostly just saying, hey, are you um, here to, are you, are you still doing this? Yeah, so, so registry, burn, so. Burn is storing the data in the registry today. Ah, okay. But it's I'm trying to remember if it was like there's butyl methods to help you access that data, but there's no way in the authoring to try to use that stuff. Right. So like a custom BA could access the data, but if you want to use it for cool stuff like automatically populating a variable with the value from the previous version, then that's not. You need a custom VA. Yeah. Today, you can, you automatically get persisted variables when they're persisted, right? But only for the version, the same version of the bundle, or the same bundle ID, I guess. I'm not sure I understand Jacob's question. The registry keys were added. I mean, Jacob's the one that implemented storing the data. I haven't really done any work on this. The registry didn't contain the VARs in 3x. Okay. Right, that was RSM. Yep, that's what the, yeah, the resume file contained them. <clears throat> I, well, I, a custom I, BA can do all this. The, the moving the data to the registry means a custom BA can do all this. All right. So I, at a high level, I'm mostly just looking for it. Jacob, are you still pushing this forward? And it, it, I, it's just a yes that says, yes, you will work with Sean because Sean's in burn uh, to kind of finalize whatever's being done here. Yes. All right. Great. So we will keep this in before and you guys will move that one forward. Um. Pyro throws an MSI exception and patch. Uh, this is patching. I am going to do this, sadly. Burn API documentation. So yeah. this one, this feature was supposed to be used the same process the DTF is using oh. to produce its help file oh. and do the same stuff for burn. That's what uh, this feature is about. Yeah, OK. Sandcastle. So basically, I'm blocked on this issue until the DTF documentation is Decided. fleshed out. Right. Okay. But you still want to do that in before. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Sandcastle bad. Uh, Wixel files should be able to include other Wixel files. Bob. Four, six, um, six, six, seven. This would be cool. Um, it's not critical. It's not a regression. Um, I do not anticipate getting to this by v4 preview one. Uh, what about v4 RTM? No. Okay. I, I, I don't know if that's a thing. I just thought I'd throw it out there and see if anybody reacted. Um, there, <laughs> the ideal is, I, I did that backwards. The ideal is that there is no more feature work after preview one. Correct. That's, that, that's the current plan of record. We can change that plan of record if we choose to, but the current plan of record is, the only things that are going into pre after preview one are people used it and it didn't work, so we fixed it. <laughs> yep, yep. No, that's why that's why my answer did not change. Yep, and your um, answer was completely in line with that. So does that push this to VDEX? Then we move on. Um, so it's labeled breaking change. That's wrong. Okay. I don't know what jerk labeled it with breaking. Oh, it was me. Yeah. Um, so I I just removed that label. Um, it could go into a four X. I think it could be additive. Okay. I, I you know, so uh, yeah, it, it's. I don't have to think about four X yet, though. So okay. <laughs> Sorry, it it is not a breaking change. Therefore, the the traditional it must happen in a in a dot zero does not apply. I because understand what you're saying. So in Semver terms, it could go into a minor release. Right, because it's additive. Okay. Yeah. Now that said, uh, I. Personally, don't want there to be a 4x, so I would vote V next. Um, also, 
unless someone else is interested in this, you know, this is not a priority for me. So yeah, okay. We need to. We need to. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting distinction for us to try to come up with a a way of organizing next release features that do or do not require a a major release change, a major number. Just figure out the correct way to. I don't know if it's a tag. Yeah. yeah. Well, or, we have that's, what, that's what the breaking tag. change is supposed yeah. to be. Okay, then we should be using that. Then it's a I hope we're using it well. Milestones we have. Yeah. Okay. Then I I hope we're using it well. We're probably not. That's my we, fear. We relied we relied on V four O as being our breaking change tag. Okay. Well before right. we had the breaking change right. tag. Well then let's let's we'll, I'll, we'll keep that in mind. All right. So this will move to V next and yeah. it's not marked breaking change. So if someone was like, you know what, I really would like to slip this into a four one or a four two or whatever we if we ever do those things, that we can go have that discussion at that time. Whatever that would mean. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'm in the same boat on this one. When I took this issue initially, I thought it was related to uh, cab spanning. And when I started looking at and organizing my notes for cab spanning, I realized that this is not about cab spanning. This is actually about volume spanning. So volume spanning is when you have, well, in this case, they talk about very large DVDs, uh, which are you know, eight gigs or something. I forget. I, I don't even know what the dual layer is anymore, but medias that are much larger than a cab. So the idea of being able to say, take all my content and then compress it into N number of cabs, because cabs can be at max two gigabytes, and then split those cabs appropriately over eight gigabytes of space. So this is actually uh, medium volumes and i don't even know that media template is the right way to implement it given the way that media template works right now because media template operates within the sizes of two gigabytes in msi right now so it's like ah net 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 this is an enhancement i almost took the enhancement off because like no this is just cab spanning being broken i was like whatever then i dug into the whole thing i was like ah so i'm not particularly interested in doing this in four and i think this can move to v next unless someone really thinks that I'm wrong and we need to do this multi-volume stuff now. No, I I agree that media template is really incompatible with volumes. Yeah. Um, And it should do more to prevent that assumption. Like I think today it accepts volume label, which is completely antithetical to multiple volumes. So I, I don't, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know what was what was attempt being attempted there, but I think it's wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, media template is very tied to the MSI concept of media table, and I don't know how. Yeah. Well, so I would also back it up and say we need a more holistic approach, including moving some of this stuff out of of the authoring and into more of the concept of a of a. Uh, back-end specific build um, where you can build your thing once. We we see this with um, some projects that use um, Wix outs <laughs> where you build and link once and then you bind multiple times. Um, this would solve the problem today we have with bundles getting a new bundle ID every time they're generated. Um, if you're trying to organize them for a DVD and a CD? Uh, more like media and um, download only. Oh, yeah. We have a, a hack a, a, for bundles that works, but where you just copy the XC and you don't have to do anything right. else. Right. But, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is, I, I remember you talking about this, the whole concept of this release concept, like having yeah. a, a noun inside Wix for release stuff. So, all right. So I think this ends up underneath that on. It definitely feels like it's more in that umbrella of, hey, let's imagine how releases should work holistically yep. and then do that as opposed to, hey, let's just build a package with a bunch of, you know, cabs and stuff. Yep. Okay. So if nobody's arguing, that's not going to make V4. I will have one later about cab spanning. There is still one there for that. Uh, Wix 392 IO exceptions so ending. Oh, yeah. Can, can we put those in 4X instead of V next if no one wants to do them? Sure. Like I'd rather 
V next only have issues that we're actually planning on doing. Okay. Mm, I'm. I, I want to go the opposite way, just to be a little contrarian, because <laughs> I like that. Um, I want V next to be the things to be clearly the things that we ha that we have to work on. Wait, isn't that what Sean just said? Is it? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if no um, one wants it. If no one is planning on doing it, it shouldn't go into V next. Sorry, I, this is something. Oh, I don't think. No, okay. I don't think. No, it, no, I don't think it's that we then. don't want to do this. I'm saying uh, this is the kind of thing that, you know, requires the brain trust to to, or a subset thereof to, you know, spend some time. So, like, I'm interested in the concept of moving all of this kind of stuff out of the authoring proper and into like rob said the release concept so i'd like um, to use the whip required label for that well this does that's true this requires a i mean well oh sure, sure. however this has been done this would definitely need a rewhip required yeah no that's fine i just don't want sorry i i don't want <laughs> so again with with um the way we've used milestones in the past we put all of the breaking changes into v4.0 and stuff that wasn't a breaking change into well first 3.x and for a while now 4.x so i was using v next as a these are big things we need to look at holistically but i guess we've also been treating it as the oh, breaking change we're not doing it in 40 therefore um so yeah whip required is probably better right we can scan for that yeah Okay. And then where does it go? Well, I would argue it has to go in V next because this isn't something we're okay. going to do in a, in a yeah. minor release. Okay. Unless we, well, no. it's more likely that it would be a breaking change. Yeah. That, this is so be, I'll add that label yeah. as well. This is going to be big. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's a couple issues around that release thing. And that's one of those tricky parts. You're like, oh, you know, a couple of these things that's like, tie them all together into a nice right. little bow and say, this is this concept that we think yeah. we've distilled from all these little issues or big issues yep. as the case may be. Yeah. All right. So this is the IO exceptions blowing up the build. Um, I made a change low level to try to wrap most anything that used the standard file system accessor to have some retries on it. Um, Bob, you, were you thinking about doing? Were you? Do you want to continue to dig into this one? Um, it seemed to me that the way V four is implemented, the uh, the retries that you added are sufficient. That's assuming everything uses the file system object. Okay. I I I, uh, I did not go and do the validation that everything used it. That's what I'm okay. saying. Sorry, I that's see. what I should say. I I didn't go and validate that. Yes, everything isn't, there's like no errant file dot copies floating around somewhere. I didn't go and check that at all. Okay. Um, I will therefore keep this okay. to do that investigation. Yep. That's fine. Um, I think between the, the proper use of, of intermediate folders and the retries that you added, we should be as good as we can get given the fact that antivirus is still plaguing build systems everywhere. So, all right, you're going to keep it before. Uh, yep. Native version resources and tools do not match the installer version. This is mine. It's a placeholder for what am I doing with the installer? They mostly, uh, every time I come to this, I sit, go, hmm, what am I doing with the installer? Um, create separate feed for minor releases as well as the V4 feed can't be parsed are basically carry-ons to this. What am I doing with the installer and how are we distributing it? So essentially all of these kind of go together in that one bucket, um, but are different pieces of that. So I keep them as separate issues. Um, Wick. Enhance Wix utility user in element to include comment. Was this done? Or I don't know. Uh, Ron? Ron, you still here? I hope. I got to fill space here. Uh, so this was cool. I think this is one of the things. Yeah, so Ron did create a pull request, but uh, it's not tied here. So, all right. So don't know where that's out. Doesn't look too hard. Check it out. So Ron I know he's working on end-to-end -end tests. Ah, uh, end-to-end -end tests for it. Those would not be as easy to implement as just shoving the code in there. So that is interesting. Yep. Although still theoretically, one Fantastic. of the tests that you ported, Sean, did 
was for the the user creation custom actions. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's a great. little harder than just pushing code, but not as hard as having to create your own infrastructure. Right, Adios, right. Jacob. Thanks for joining. We already got through your issue. You, you, you may leave now. <laughs> Feels like old school Taraj. We had that when I was in office a long time ago. You'd have to be there for your issues. And when you were done, the dev manager would be like, all right, we're done with you. You can leave now. And you're like, thank God. I go back and fix the bugs they just gave me. Anyway, so it's great. Ron says he's still working on it. That's good. Cool. Uh, we will continue. Hope you see that. Burn support sideloading Apex packages. Yes, it should. And it, this bug is so old that they're called Apex packages. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They're called MSX now. Um, yeah, this would be great. Yeah, um, I agree it would be great. And I do not believe I'm going to have time to do the significant work that's involved. Yeah, I kind of guess that. All right, so off to the next. Probably needs a whip required on it, probably. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. All right. Very good. Hey, we're getting the hang of this. Uh, update error messages for ensure Wix tools installed. This is me uh, doing votive stuff around Wix before. No big. I found this issue. I was like, great. That'll be my place. I'll remind me to do all that. Uh, install message references options button even when suppress UI is yes. Four, five, six, two, four, Bob. Yes. Um, this one is interesting. It was basically... Um... I, I had you don't have question. to tell us what it is if you just want to tell us that yes you're doing it or not. Okay. Unless right. you really want it, unless you really want to dig into it. I'm well, just you know, time. I I do tend to do that. Um, I will keep this for a slightly bit longer period okay. of time. Okay. If again it needs investigation, whether the the femutal stuff that Sean added way back when uh -huh. could be used to do this, I suspect the answer is. Maybe at best, um, but okay. I'll give it another cycle. All right. Uh, this isn't assigned to anybody. Local user created by MSI package is absent after major upgrade. Um, not being assigned to nobody is tricky. It's probably not happening in four unless someone's planning to pick it up soon. This is not a minor. I think problem. this is a. I think this is a very large challenge given the way that component rough counting is being done in yeah. this scenario inside the Windows installer, right? Is that, that kind of I, rings a yeah, bell. I agree. So do we flip this from bug to whip, ex to whip required and remove documentation? I don't know why it's just documentation. And then move to be next. Um, sorry, I'm just, I'm waffling on the remove bug. I think it's still probably a bug. It's just, it's a bug that requires you know, yeah, I don't think design. I don't think we're using bug anywhere. It's kind of like this really ancient hangover. I think we just uh, use enhancement yeah. at this point for new features, and then everything else is well obvious. It's a bug. It doesn't work right. At least that's what whoever opened it would say. Well, um, I still like the label. Oh, see, I, I kind of want to red and yeah, I kind of want to burninate the that label. But um, anyway, sorry, Stack Overflow reference. Yes, it is. Um, anyway. I don't think anybody's I've been trying to like see if anybody's stepping on it. Yeah. So Ron's saying he's working on some local user issues. I don't think this is necessarily about local users. It's more about uh, reference tracking the behavior of the component states when doing a major upgrade in this way. I think the Windows installer is not reporting them in a way that makes writing extensions easy or writing custom actions easy. So this is probably a very systematic challenge, low-level challenging problem to solve. Well, it's low-level because this is a commit CA. If this is one of those we have we have uh, conflicting goals, um, uh, and and it might not be entirely possible to uh, solve both goals. Yes. Implement. Mm, yuck. Oh. Yuck, yeah. yuck. And this is definitely yuck. a whip required. Okay. Definitely work required, um, but it's not assigned to anybody. So MSI. Unless someone MSI volunteers, is not uninstalled bug. Yeah, I think we're gonna live with this one another round. I think we have to. <sighs> um, Wix three eleven standard BA capitalism. So sorry, V next and whip required, right? Well, that's yep. where it goes. Okay, great. Moving on, five seven six one Wix three eleven standard string capitalization. Um. 
Yes. So okay. this is another one that's in 4.0 because it was a quote unquote breaking change. Um, it it's not a breaking change really. Well, it kind of is. It it would it would mean that the English strings and the extensive set of localized strings we have um, would diverge. So that's kind of why it's in. Um, in 4.0. Um, Does it stay? That's really the important part. So if we limit it to Wix standard BA, it doesn't matter because Wix standard BA strings are not, we don't have any localized Wix standard BA strings, unfortunately, or fortunately in this case, because it means we can you know, change them up a bit. The only localized strings we have for work standard BA are for the prereq BA. So if we limit it to work standard BA, we can keep it. And I would, this is something I, I would get to. I don't have strong opinions any which way. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Wix toolset does not install targets in the Microsoft Build Tools 2017 folder. This is a documentation thing for V3, isn't it? Um, yeah, or basically this is well 5804. That's how it started. Um, this is how it started. How's it going? This is the hey look, you need to. Um, back when 2017 came out, uh, yeah, you know, it's you, these. You, we had to change the templates. Yeah. And yes, we have all of these. Someone actually wrote them up. So maybe, hey, this is documentation, right? Uh, at this point for 2017, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, we didn't do it. 2017 is way gone now. So. But the same thing applies to VS 2019 and 2022. And Oh, okay. But if yeah, you okay. have, if you have, an, see. See, this is the, this is the problem uh, we have with. Remember how Votive installed the forwarding targets? Yeah. Yes, I, are yes, I do. No longer installed. Yes. Without those, you need to make these changes to your Wix proj. Right. So uh, this is not a 4.0 bug. At this point, this is not a 4.0 bug. It is a web uh, bug, doc bug. It's a doc bug. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Or we say, okay. Documented. Success. Thank you very much, Cameron314. Mm, pie. <laughs> oh, Bob. Uh, I, I have no strong opinions on this at this point. Um, I will keep it. Okay. Uh, Wix Quiet Exec Inc. Uh, sorry, 5818. Wix Quiet Exec incorrectly assumes Unicode output on first byte. Yep. I do know it does that. Is this staying? I do not anticipate getting to this. Okay, great. I think it goes into V next and someone can take a swing at it. Yeah, funky little things. Um, restart does not work on non elevated burn installers on Windows 2019. Oh, yes, this. Uh, uh, six, yeah, one, this four, is non trivial. Five. This yeah. is non trivial. Um, it's definitely WIP required. Yeah. Um, and because of the security implications, it's, oh, it's already labeled WIP required. Yes, because of the security implications, I don't think it's something that, you know, can slip in. Um, this would be great, but again, I don't anticipate having the cycle to do something this big before preview one. All right. I might get to it. Well, want to leave it in preview one and take it? Yeah, we can if we can give it. I mean, Sean, you can always say, I'm not going to get to this later. You know? Or yeah. we can say, like, yeah, it's going to have to land to V next. That's kind of where we're at. I mean, if you want me to take it in that case, then OK. But I don't know whether I'll get to it or not. I, I'm saying I won't. So if you want to leave it on the preview one table, then it should be gently reminded by assigning it to you. 
that's true. <laughs> In the end, I don't. I don't want to leave it unassigned. No, it I stay unassigned. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. To be fair, I'm more worried about these next two <laughs> having solutions than I am server 2019. Uh, .NET Core um, and the conditions for handling .NET Core or what is now .NET. Um, I never heard. I know. I mean, right? we we asked them. We tried to give them a heads up, and we were asking them whether that was something they were going to pick up, mm. and it sounded like it was, but they never responded. Like when they're going to do it. So one of the people we were talking to no longer works at Microsoft, so that's not oh. helpful. It yeah, that doesn't help. It could be that the people <laughs> were like, "Hey," and like. That mail address no longer resolves. <laughs> I mean, that's another thing that I might get to. And it really depends on how long it takes for you to do your stuff. Yeah, I, it's yeah. I I don't think we go. I don't know if V four could go without it at this point. I so. completely disagree with that. Okay. V four, uh, based on the fact that .dot net, yeah, you know, core, modern. .NET changes every month. The the approach. Uh, let me back up. I don't. I, that doesn't really matter. That complicates things. But at the end of the day, I, the the we can't ship without it is you know kind of bogus because one of the things we spent a whole lot of pain on was being able to rev. The extensions, among uh, other things, separately from true. the rest of the tool set. That's true. Um, if this is the only thing that's left for 4.0, I would absolutely ship 4.0 without it. Um, there's only so much we can do. <sighs> you know, the the team made some changes, bad changes. Not that they're strangers to that. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just the idea that we can't ship without it, I think, is false. Yeah, it, a, it holds us hostage yeah, to stuff that we've provided in the in the past. It's true. We should have a solution. I don't disagree with that, but the whole you know we have to do it is un. It's unreasonable to you know. It's a part of it is this is the. The .NET team just dumping the problem, creating the problem, and then dumping it on other people to solve. Um, so just as a whole general, you know, open source maintainability thing, I reject the concept of, yeah, we have to solve it. It would be good if we did, but they don't, they no longer appear interested. Um, so I don't know, maybe we need to ship without it. So people can see the problem beyond what they're what they've already demonstrated in 3x your point that we can ship the extension without having to ship the core tool set again is a good one yeah as long as that and that's got to be true right sean like we don't want to change the engine just to detect dotnet core so no and we want bundle extensions right that yeah okay yeah so all right, we're gonna leave this as a special case and leave it unassigned for now, and we will see if we can find some people again in a little bit. How far, we're gonna do one page today. We're gonna to do these first 25, I think, today. Um, unhelpful behavior when including multiple BAs, 6305, Bob. Well, I took it, and then a week later, Sean made it really complicated. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. I know. <laughs> what what you, do you mean? The, the comment you added, well, now a year and a half ago, about <laughs> how about how you couldn't make it happen with a test. Like, ah, well, that's what I was looking for is a test. Um, and I just haven't gone back to look at... Uh, at what you did, so. Oh, wrong one. Um, I wish it was empty. 
I'm. I'll I'll keep this. Okay. For now, uh, it's it is low priority for me. But all right. All right. Uh, new minimum OS for V4 uh, documentation. Well, I think this this will. We should keep this open, even if it doesn't stay with yes, Bob. We, and we just we need to put this in the right place. And before this is the and the website is decided, um, which is where it goes. Right. Uh, now this one I'm a little more curious about. Document all public types and members. Uh, I suggest making a lot of stuff internal. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, that was mostly a joke to solve the problem of needing uh, to create public documentation. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I think we're probably not that far off right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, in some, terms of certainly closer than we were before, data is still not going to be covered hardly at all. Um, okay. But, you know, it, it, it's going to be, it's minimal reference documentation. Uh, um, okay. Like most at, of the symbols best. have no documentation on them. That's, Problematic. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the yeah, it's it's a lot, and a lot of it was generated from XSDs of days gone past. So it's a lot of content there. Um, and the downside is, well, there are two downsides. One, we don't have a managed API build solution yet, um, and the second is. If we did, it would be based off of doc comments, which means we'd have to rev the code to update the documentation. Uh, true. Even, I mean, yeah, it would be no functional change, but uh, if we do it right, but it would still require <laughs> code changes and a depend again, depending on how we implement the build solution for the managed API. Um, it might mean that we would have to actually, you know, rev our NuGet packages, which seems bad. It might be that documenting documentation via doc comments is not the way to go. Uh, sure. Uh, I mean. I also don't know how much value doc comments documentation Joe is going to add on top of all the symbols, for example. Uh, yeah. I mean, sure, but 99% of the time it's, this is the file symbol and here's the name field on it. <laughs> and you're like, thanks. I knew that. Right. Right. <laughs> Now the extensibility is a little more interesting and that has better coverage because that's something that as an extension writer, you, you use, and then you override the values and be able to see the doc if it was available inside visual studio is, you know, yeah, that, right, right, that's right. certainly, you can see that has more value and that's where we have a bunch of things. I think some of the output objects or most of the output objects have data. Like if you open up the data, thing you use it to open a Wix PDB or whatever. I think you get help mm -hmm. on that. But when you get a symbol, it's just like, yeah, it's the file symbol. There's no doc comment on that. Right, right. So, well, it's basically down to, uh, are you saying that the symbols are self-documenting? I, I, I don't know. I would question the value in the time spent documenting them. That's Because if they're not self-documenting, they're pretty close. Yeah, and yeah. in a case that there's not is so rare, I'm not sure I would look for a dot comment to tell me that it was different. Yep, uh, I mean, yep. I'm not sure I would expect a dot comment to be the thing that's like suddenly appear and be like, ta-da, I've saved you from this one thing that was a little different from the others. So in, in general, I think, you know, one, we have the big gaping maw of, of unknown work required to get documentation ready for preview one and then RTM. Um, this would fall into that bucket. I'd be fine with saying we don't need all that we're going to get done done by preview one. 
uh, we're, we're still expecting to build between preview one and RTM. Yep. So therefore, you know, I think it's, it's uh, fine to say that we can, you know, we can hit the highlights in preview one and then finish what we're going to finish by RTM. Again, I'm a little annoyed or concerned because it means without, you know, revving the code, we can't further update the documentation after RTM. Um, so that kind of feeds into the, okay, so what's our solution for building managed API documentation and can we do it without requiring that we actually, you know, produce a build, certainly produce a release, but even producing a build, um, so that we don't need to rev NuGet packages just for documentation, except if that's how you get documentation into Visual Studio. And I believe it is, so. So what are we doing with this issue? We're keeping V4 as a review all public types or just review? Well, uh, I think we have to, once we have a plan for API documentation in general, DTF, burn, so forth. Yeah, yeah, okay, you know, that's fair. Then that's review. Fair. Yeah, yeah, and right. we, we have to review yeah. and see what our gaps are. There, there's enough spaces in this that are not filled in that, you're right, we can keep this around as it is and we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. all right. All right, I'm, yeah, okay. Um, Blair, I don't think said hello. I don't know if he joined us somewhere along the line, but he has the B request gets dropped when UI is shown on engine thread. Sean, you might be able to speak to this in lieu of that. I mean, if he doesn't do it, then I'll do it. Okay. Then we'll keep it there, and hopefully Blair is like, oh, yeah, yeah, I just totally forgot. I'm getting... Or maybe he's like, yeah, I've, I've almost got it done. Who knows? Well, hopefully he'll come back. Uh, Burn does not repair an MSI when slipstreamed with a minor update patch. 6350. Yeah. Numbers. yeah, I should probably look at that, huh? <laughs> All right. I think that's where we're going to finish up today. That's 25. That's half of them. Although some of them have gone away, I think. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So we got through the first page. There's 50, 25 per page. Hit F5. I think we made one. Whoa, did we really make five go away? Yeah. Oh, awesome. So uh, we will pick up after the one that I forgot that we just talked about. And I should have remembered before we added one, two, three, four, five to this page. There we go. Six, three, five, zero. Uh, we will pick up it after six, three, five, zero. Uh, probably next week. We'll go ahead and finish this up. Not next week, in two weeks. We'll finish that up. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. What am I doing? I'm out of practice here. Um, see, there's a beautiful slide I was talking about. Um, questions, comments, other things people want to talk about. Now, while you're thinking about your question and typing it into the little box so you can send it to us, remember you only get 200 characters, so don't type too much. Um, but you can send multiple messages. In two weeks, we'll be back. We'll do this again. Essentially, we'll triage whatever pops up for that week. And then we will review the remaining, currently, 25 issues in uh, Wix 4 to make sure that we do a sweep and we know uh, what's in here and what things we're definitely not doing right now. Um, any rough timelines on Wix 4? All right. So we're going to sweep through these issues and then uh, get them done. So the, the purpose of this is to be able to answer uh, Zach's question of when does Wix 4 release? And I, I preview one, I want <laughs> a lot of it's dependent on me getting through some very large items in patching. Uh, cap spending, I'm less worried about, but patching could be a very big work item. Um, it's the thing that honestly concerns me the most. I, 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 I'm working, really want to have preview one out the, in the third quarter this year, right? So like, it's already July, August is here. So, you know, September. Um, and so really want that to work um, or to be out in preview, preview one there. I wanted our Wix 4 to come out RTM this year, but if we get any number of bugs on preview one, then we're going to hit holidays really fast. And I don't know that we're going to hit a confidence level that yes, we have a, um, absorbed all of the issues that people that were able to adopt the preview one were able to find. I'm, my confidence is not high that we'll be able to get through them. 
But the goal is to get Wix 4 done as rapidly as possible um, to get these features in and completed. Does, will Wix 4 work well with .NET Publish? So I don't know what you mean by .NET Publish. .NET Publish is just a command you run, and then you can run Wix.build after that. Um, there are improvements in the Wix targets to publish other projects that require publishing. Uh, it does the, and that works. It does not work as well as, it, it does not handle incremental because the publish of the other projects does not handle incremental. So it depends on what you mean by publish in those cases, but it does work much better than Wix 3 does. Um, we've at least made some attempts to make it work. Is there a .NET MS Build equivalent of .NET Publish? Is, is it just there, a published target? There is the published target inside MS Build. Okay. But they treat it as a terminal and they don't have any incremental behavior on it. So if you run Publish sure, sure. and you run Publish again, it just does everything again. It's, yeah. it's really poorly written um, but, inside but MS Build. But can Wix follow that? Yes, Wix and the it targets. does. Yes, okay. Wix, well, it, Wix 4 actually does do that. Um, it's challenging, and I've done, I did a lot of work trying to make uh, most of those things work. And one thing I know that, sorry, I listed with the things that don't, I know don't work, but yes, it right. generally works. I, I was going to say, Zach, the answer is yes, absolutely. Well, I, and yeah. an asterisk, and then Rob can go in with all yes. the right. so, details. Anyway, inside MS Build. And the thing is that the word .NET publish from a command line is, no, you run that, and then you run the Wix build after that, and yeah, then it works. Right. So. That's why I asked about MS build. I don't know if you can do, I don't know what happens if you .NET publish on a Wix proj. Like, I don't know what that's going to do. That's actually interesting. Yeah, I, 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 maybe something we try, but that's... Well, can you .NET publish a solution? Yes, I think okay. so. Huh? Then I'm pretty you can't a project. I don't know. I've never tried a solution. I don't yeah, think. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, because otherwise it's all just package references. So. The fundamental truth is publish is, is definitely not deep uh seamlessly integrated into all of the other behaviors inside MS Build. So as yeah. I recall also there was a there was an announce an, an announcement on the .NET announcements repo about ways to make publish better. Oh. I missed that. I, I I don't, uh, yeah, it's big, big memory of it. Um, I don't know that it specifically dealt with the implementation issues, but something like defaulting grids and something, oh, something. Yeah, that's not, that's not the problem. Right, right. The problem is you run the publish target, and then you run it again, and it just does everything again. You're like, really? Yeah. Incremental's nice. Correctness is more important. Yeah, so Zach, I mean, you're not wrong. The problem is that publish is wired in really wrong. <laughs> it's just really weird and it doesn't work. So you build a Wix proj, it will allow you to do the publish target on other project references. So you publish them and then you build the Wix and it'll end up having the final result. And we've not tried to wire, uh, I'll, probably, I'll try it probably to see what happens if you try to do a publish on a Wix project, just to see, um, but generally you should be building the .NET, the, the building the Wix proj, and then we'll see at that. But after a .NET public, I mean, this is, I mean, this is the problem, right? You need to publish in .NET 5 and above. Yes. A so, normal build yes. is no longer sufficient. That's exactly right. And that's why I did the work inside Wix targets to handle that case better because you yeah. have to do it. And it has all kinds of problems because they don't think about that problem. Like, it right. does not right. seem that they've thought deeply about that problem as a, oh, you but they publish and you're done. And you're like, well, yeah, how do you what? consume all that downstream? And they're like, no, you're done. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> we, we've just started. Dude, and, are you suggesting that, that a Microsoft team didn't think about deployment? Yeah. Uh, Shocking. Yeah. So, and and the web projects do kooky things. I mean, they just, it's not clean. It's not good, but it's, but to be what fair, we haven't been playing well in the system yet. We will be playing better in Wix 4. And I'm hoping that we can maybe do, uh, improve from there once we're in the systems and can start pointing at them clearly. It, I agree with Zach though. It, it, it does seem like publish is, you know, it's in the same vein as what 
you know your setup does. So, um, it yeah. it would it, it seems like it would be a good fit, except for implementation problems. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're not in four, but you know, we could we could argue that there sh should be a different that Wix build could go back to more to what compile and link was, and Wix publish is more like what Bob's talking about in the release. So maybe, I wasn't going that far. I I, I'm, I'm, I'm randomly jumping into a, a, a potential future that may never come true, but it's an interesting thought experiment to say that a Wix build gives you a Wixipole, and then you take that Wixipole as publish, and you get a, or and then as publish, you get all the binaries and cabs and everything built up. I don't know. I mean, we could we can explore that depending on how publish moves forward. Right now, publish feels generally as an afterthought inside the net tooling it's kind of an end thing you just do that and then you're done it does not integrate deeply into all the systems and so that we will have to be working our way through all those problems anyway and it will be better in four it's not at all a thing in three and you have to do tremendous amounts of backflips to make it work well in three well that'll fit in well with the post build uh, release process <laughs> yeah so Okay, I think we filled space. We will be back in two weeks. I think that's August 4. Oh, gosh, it's August. <laughs> it's August in two weeks, less than two weeks, in one week. All right, I give up. There's a lot of code that has to be written. I need to go back to that, plus all the other things that are going. Anyway, um, I get caught up and do those things. We'll be back in two weeks. We will do the same thing, triage, Wix 4 review, see where we're at, and... Every week, hopefully, the list of Wix 4 bugs is getting shorter. At least that's what I'm trying to do by focusing it down. And we will are working our way towards the final release. That's of preview one and then beyond. So two weeks from now, same place, same time, August 4th. We'll see all you guys then. Bye. Bye. Bye.